This is one milliliter of seawater, approximately 20 drops. <laughs> Safety first, we're at NTU after all. But if you thought that this was not that much of a, of a problem, think again. In fact, in those 20 drops, there is the health of the world's oceans. If we were to zoom in those drops, we would see an incredible variety of forms and functions. These are diatoms you are seeing here. And if we were to zoom in even farther in the incredible world of microbes, we would not see a great variety of forms, but we would see an incredible variety of functions. There's millions of these per every milliliter of water. And if we were to take the global oceans, we would have 1,300 billion billions of billion microbes. That's 100 million times more microbes than there are stars in the known universe. And the smaller dots you saw in the picture before, those are viruses. There's about 10 to 100 times that number. And despite the fact that they are extremely small, if we were to string them head to tail into a tiny little string, we would be able to have a string so long that we could wrap it around our solar system 8,500 times. But, you know, numbers are not everything, right? And so, microbes are also extremely important. I want you to do an experiment with me. I want you to take two deep breaths right now. One, take another one. Feels good, right? Well, without microbes in the ocean, you would have been able to take only one. More than half of the oxygen you breathe comes from microbes in the ocean. And without microbes in the ocean, you wouldn't have the pyramids of Giza, which are built on blocks that are nothing else than the bodies of microbes that drain to the bottom of the ocean. And if you drove here, well, you wouldn't have been able to do that because oil is nothing else than the dead bodies of microbes that got converted into oil over millions of years. And if you like fish, well, microbes are the basis of the food chain. So without microbes, you wouldn't have fish on your plate. My passion for the ocean started at an early age. I've been a sailor all my life. And that little boy over there, the blonde one, is me in 1973 with the sailing national champion of Italy. And as a sailor, I see every day the damage we're doing to the ocean. I see the pollution we're throwing into the oceans. So, in 2013, together with my wife Rachel, as passionate ocean advocates, we decided to see what we could do to actually look at what's the impact on the microbes. And so, we decided to build tools and find out how much science could be done on a sailboat going around the world's ocean. So, in 2013, we bought a boat. We had these grandiose ideas of sun tanning and uh, having fun and margaritas on deck, etc. Um, in reality, most of the time, the situation was a little bit more hairy. There were uh, squalls and there were uh, wind puffs and all sorts of conditions that were, um, well, not making it so easy to drink margaritas and sun tanning on the deck. Uh, Rachel is the one helping me take control of the boat here after a major squall. And if you don't think this condition is hairy, well, let me tilt your eyes on straight for you. Okay, so that wasn't exactly what we were looking for. But we did experience uh, something a lot worse. We did experience and, and see firsthand, really, how much we're impacting the ocean as humans. One night, coming down the Strait of Malacca, we stopped in a marina, and we couldn't sleep all night because of this constant knock, knock, knock. These were things hitting the hull all night, and they were nothing else than pieces of plastic that were coming down the river where the marina is built and hitting our hull. 
Now, while it's particularly evident at the macroscopic level what's happening, we don't know what's happening at the microscopic level. How is this plastic impacting the microbes of the ocean? But not only, the microbes might hold the key to degrade some of that plastic for us. So it's very important that we understand how this works. In 2013, we also traveled to some of the most pristine coral reefs out there. They were beautiful. They were incredible. Nobody else was there. We were the only ones uh, allowed there to take samples and dive. The water was crystal clear. There were lots of fish. There were fantastic colors. Just three years later, we went back to the exact same coral reef, and we found a completely different condition. The colors were all but gone. The water was murky. The fish were not there. The only difference was a two degrees increase in seawater temperature, because 2016 was the worst El Nino condition in recorded history. And while the impact, once again, is quite evident at the macroscopic level, we know nothing about what's happening to the microbes. And the microbes are driving these ecosystems. So how do we know what microbes are doing, since they are so small and so many? Well, the way we go about studying them is by decoding their DNA. All we do is take a bucket of water, take it back to the lab, and look at uh, what's happening. And by decoding their DNA, we're able to see not only who is there, but what they are doing. This then becomes a big data problem, because we can collect this data for sure, but can we collect enough? And how can we collect this data on a constant basis so that we can build ocean health model year after year? This is why in 2013 we went out. Together with Rachel, we pioneered citizen oceanography as a way to involve full-time sailors to collect vital data about the world's oceans. Sailors are the ideal platform for doing this because they go in the same places year after year after year. And they have to go in the same places because they follow the prevailing winds and currents. They're also passionate about the ocean, so they're really keen to do it, and that's fantastic. And there's another advantage. Modern ocean sailboats are extremely fast. A modern ocean racer travels three times the speed of an oceanographic vessel. And by taking this data really quickly, we're able to take time out of the equations that we use to build ocean health models. Another thing that's making this possible and that this revolution possible in the past few years is the fact that until a few years ago, machines to decode DNA were big, about the size of uh, a fridge. They cost uh, hundreds of thousand dollars. Today, the situation is completely different. Third generation DNA sequencing machine can be plugged into a laptop, can be taken in the middle of the Indian Ocean on a sailboat, can be taken on a remote beach in a pristine coral reef. In fact, they are so small that I could walk out of my house with one in my pocket on a TEDx stage. And I have one right here. That's the size of a modern DNA sequencing machine. But the advantage is also that uh, we're able to teach in a matter of, uh, of hours or a couple of days to anyone to do this. And this is power. This is game changing. Imagine a world where every boat, every ship, every fishing vessel, even every kayak can go out there and collect data. Imagine a world where this data about the, world, the health of the world's oceans can be shared in public repositories for the benefit of mankind. Imagine a world where this data can be used to build ocean health baselines, where this data can uh, be used to protect marine reserves, where this can be used uh, even to restore damaged ecosystems. And who knows? 
And there is the secret to the great plastics in the world's oceans. So if you're passionate about the ocean, if uh, you have a boat, but also if you don't have it and you just want to you know, participate in this, why don't you join the adventure? Why don't you embark with us in this incredible new world of understanding the microbes of the world's oceans? And if you're wondering what happened to that little kid in the picture, well, he grew up. He ended up winning the same national sailing champion 20 years later and a couple of others. But most importantly, him, me, well, I ended up being a father just two weeks ago. <laughs> and the problem here is that uh, even more now I feel passionate about the ocean because of that. Will my son be able to see pristine coral reef? Will my son be able to see fish in the ocean? Will my son be able to see a, a, an ocean without plastic? We need to understand the oceans better at the most basic level, that of the microbes. And together, we can. Thank you very much.